With the recent publication of process validation guidelines by the FDA and the recent publications of the ICH 8, 9, and 10, it's become more and more apparent that aseptic processing is going to be scrutinized um, a little bit more. So we wanted to talk a little bit today about aseptic processing and wanted to discuss the definition of asepsis and aseptic processing and then um, go into the uh, design of an aseptic process, the life cycle, and then um, touch base on uh, how to actually perform a process simulation. So asepsis is essentially the elimination or prevention of contamination in to a process or, or product. Um, it was essentially uh, first uh, used in operation rooms and hospital settings. The definition of aseptic process can de be defined by breaking it down into asepsis, which is the elimination of uh, contaminants from entering a sterile field. Uh, the goal is to eliminate the contaminants, but not, not necessarily sterility. Two sterile, multiple sterile components going into a controlled environment and essentially coming together to manufacture, in the end, a sterile manufactured product. The FDA recommends that if your pro product can be sterilized terminally, that that is the best method for your product. Whereas with aseptic processing, you're usually working with some sort of substance that cannot be sterilized terminally, such as some sort of cell-based product or products that can be sterilized in different means but have to come together in the end. That is when you would use an aseptic process over a terminal sterilization. So some upfront considerations that you should consider when designing an aseptic process is your facility design. You want to make sure that the facility is appropriate, uh, that you have the appropriate room space and the, and the appropriate design of the manufacturing area. You also want to take a look at your manufacturing layout and how the materials are going to move in and out of the room. With the, man with the manufacturing layout, you also want to consider the environment of your layout and what your classification of your environment is going to be. You might want to consider isolators or dividers in your environment, which then you would have to do a risk assessment to assess the, the risk of other environments outside of those environments. So you want to take that into consideration and do your risk assessment based on that. Some other upfront considerations that you may want to do are also your personnel. You want to have trained personnel. You also want to train them on their gowning procedures and have uh, very thorough documentation of your procedures and they need to be well understood by, their person by your personnel. Materials uh, consideration should also be part of what you're assessing. You should take a look at your initial bio burdens, your endotoxin levels. The material should be rendered sterile prior to being introduced into the aseptic processing area. And you should also minimize the holding times. One of the best considerations that you can uh, apply to your aseptic process is the life cycle approach, which is defined in the FDA's uh, process validation guideline. Um, with that life cycle pro approach, there's basically three stages. Your process design, your process qualification, and then a continued process verification. For your process design, that's where the initial design of the process takes place. It's where learning and knowledge is gained and you're using your risk assessment to uh, assess the risks prior to implementing the, the, the process. In your process qualification, you're essentially uh, implementing what you've designed in your process design and making sure that that works. And then your continued process verification is an additional step in which you continually make sure that you have a state of control in your manufacturing site through constant verification and validation of your process. During the process simulation of your aseptic process, you want to take into consideration the media type that you're using. You want to make sure that the media provides the appropriate nutrients to provide growth to a small number of organisms. In addition to that, if you're using a surrogate rather than media, you want to make sure that the surrogate does not inhibit any growth of your, the organisms as well. You also want to consider the conditions of your simulated process. You want to take a look at the maximum hold times, the different vial sizes that your manufacturing process may see. And you also want to look at the interventions that may take place, such as if a vial falls or, or there's breakage that occurs on the line. Uh, in addition to that, you also want to monitor your environment during the process simulation. At the end of your process simulation, your, the vials should be swirled and agitated, even inverted, so that the media comes in contact with the entire surface of the vial. The vials are then placed in the incubator for a minimum of 14 days. At the end of your 14-day incubation period, the vials are observed for, for growth. So when performing the initial performance qualification, each line and product configuration should be considered. In addition to that, 
a sufficient number of vials should be filled in order to simulate the, manufacture, the total manufacturing pr process. There should be a minimum of three simulation runs that are performed for the initial qualification. In addition to that, you should be doing periodic uh, performance requalifications. Those should be done twice annually. For additional information on aseptic processing, please contact us at Nelson Laboratories.